Welcome to AgriTalk and thank you for keeping it KT and Farmers TV. Today uh, we are talking about dairy farming and with me today is Dr. Nelson Ojango who is a vet by profession and uh, at the moment he's a livestock consultant with AgriBiz Consult. Welcome to the show, uh, Dr. Thank you very much. Um, I know I've introduced you but tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Um, currently I run AgriBiz Consult Limited. Um, I do a variety of things. Um, I run a, a variety of uh, um, consultancies uh, with various organizations. Uh, I'm the uh, in-house consultant for Anika Fund, and I am also doing some work for, by proxy for, for ILRI. Okay. Um, and I'm also sit as the vice chair of Kenya Livestock Breeders Association. Okay. Why dairy farm? Oh, okay. I, maybe I got there by, by chance mm -hmm. because uh, along, along the way uh, in my career, I ended up being a dairy farmer uh, for 10 years at Delamere Estates. Um, so, yeah, ten years late, after 10 years, you're stuck with it. Okay. Yeah. Um, when we talk about dairy farming, there's a lot of... Um, we know there's... Um, um, the cows that we know, yes. and they also the dairy goats. Yes. So that's... which which one is your favorite? I would say at this point, the dairy cattle would put the bread on the table. Okay. But I'm passionate about dairy goats. Okay. And uh, I'm a bit of a dairy goat farmer. I have a couple of herds. Ah, right. So I'm thinking we start with um, the livestock. Um, the, the the cows, yeah. and then we will gravitate slowly to to the dairy goats okay. as we as we end the show. So um, dairy dairy farming, especially uh, dairy cows, is one of the biggest uh, ventures that most Kenyans um, do, especially in parts of Rift Valley Central and uh, Coast. Though the the country at large does even the pastoralists, they still milk their cows at the end of the day. So, as a country, where are we when it comes to, to dairy farming? I think in the region, we have been considered as leading. Maybe that is our colonial legacy. Okay. Uh, and we have been seen to be exporting seed stock to Uganda, Rwanda, Tanzania, even Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we might not hold on to that for very long if we don't uh, watch our game. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who is our main competitor at the moment that we need to watch I, out? I think Rwanda has, uh, Rwanda has um, a program, has had a program for a long time, one cow per family, that wow. will propel them forward. Okay. Yeah. So um, what are some of the things that are going for us as we speak at the moment? Ah, uh, okay. We, if you drive around the country, you are likely to see dairy cattle that are dairy mm -hmm. uh, much more than you would see them in other countries. Okay. So we have, we have a larger population of dairy cattle than, than our neighbors. Mm -hmm. um, we have a culture of drinking milk, okay. whether straight milk or in tea or, in, or, or as yogurt. Okay. Slowly, there's a culture in the urban areas of eating cheese that, that also push things along. Okay. Yeah. Um, again, on, when, when we talk about dairy farming, breeding is a big... Uh, I remember growing up, we used to have those traditional cows. And then slowly, we started uh, using AI to improve our breeds. Tell us a little bit about breeding. and. Uh, what If someone is watching us now, what do they need to know when it comes to dairy cows um, breeds? What breeds are out there, first of all? Ah, and uh, how do I improve what I have at the moment to those best breeds? Okay. Yeah. Um, the, the breeds that are there today, um, the Frisian, in order of, of uh, population, mm -hmm. the Frisian, the Asher, the Jersey. The Gansey, in Kenya is has been there, but it's 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 dwindling has been dwindling. 
Okay. We, need, we need some champions to come out and, and champion the Ganze. Uh, so those are the main breeds. What was the reason for the dwindling number of the, of the Ganze? Interest, I think. Oh, okay. Interest. People championing the breed. Mm -hmm. yeah, people breeding. Um, is it that they don't produce enough milk or what is it? They, they don't produce as much as the Frisian and the Asha, mm -hmm. but neither does the Jersey, and yet the Jersey is, is fairly popular. Today you'd, you'd, you'd have a, you'd, you'd, it'd be a, be an apple task to find a hundred, say 50 Jersey mm -hmm. heifers if you wanted to buy them. Okay. So it's, 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 it's got to do with just interest. Okay. Yeah. What about the process of breeding? The process of breeding is not for the faint-hearted. Okay. It is. Uh, it takes time. Um, if I was to hire you to be manager on my farm, the effect of of you having you on the farm will show after four years, mm -hmm. because you need to have selected the, the semen that will go into the into the cow, and then the, the calf born, and then you raise that and you milk the offspring, then I can say, Philip selected, bred this cow, this cow mm. see, four years later. So mm. it, it's, it's, it's long term. So how do I select my, um, that semen? How do I arrive that this is the semen I want? Uh, that's, 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 that's like, uh, that's, uh, that's complicated and it can also be fairly easy. Mm -hmm. if, if you're breeding a certain way, uh, semen companies actually provide you with catalogs so that you can choose what you want to improve in the offspring of the, of the cow you've got. Say you've got Daisy that you want to get um, Mary Bell out of. Daisy might have um, traits that you want to improve. Say you want to raise her size, which is not really what you want to do many times, but say you want to raise her, you want to get a bigger cow then you look at the catalog and you choose a bull that will, will, will help you to get that. Okay. Um, but it takes a lot of, a lot of uh, information to produce a catalog. And yeah, so it's possible to do these things. Okay, M uh, myself growing up, I grew up in a farm. And uh, we started, uh, my father started improving our cows some time back. But I never saw a catalog. He just used to call a vet, and the vet would just come and pick whatever he's picking, just straws, without my, we, we used not to ask questions, or what breed have you, or what bull have you used? Yeah. Where do that, the, because they say information is power. Yes. Where do, do farmers get these catalogs, or this information? And is that information in a, in a way that I can easily understand? These catalogs will be provided by the semen vendors. Mm -hmm. The biggest semen vendor in Kenya is the Kenya Animal Genetics um, Center, Kagrik. Kagrik. It used to be called Kais. Kagrik produce catalogs, which are not as sophisticated as the catalogs that come in with the semen that is imported. Uh, so Kagrik is one, one source, but the semen vendors uh, will also have catalogs. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got access to the internet, of course, uh, if, if, if a semen vendor is selling you, say, a bull X, the information of that bull will be on, 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 the, on their website. Okay. So you, you can't find it. So the, the vendor is supposed to provide me with the catalogs? Yes. yes. And how, are they for free or they are being sold? The catalogs are for free, especially if you're buying their semen. Okay. Yeah. And what is the cost of a semen? Is is there a fixed price or? No, 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 no. It depends on. It depends on. Uh, on the on, 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 on the goodness of that, or the popularity, if you like, of, of, of the bull. Okay. Yeah. And it can range from hundreds to thousands. Local semen will be cheaper. Mm -hmm. Imported semen will be more expensive. Imported sex semen will be even more expensive. Okay. When we talk about sex semen, what is it exactly? It's semen that is likely to give you, 90% likely to give you a female mm -hmm. uh, offspring. So how do they arrive at, at that? That is complete. That's science. <laughs> <laughs> That's science. I, I think I, I watched, I watched a, 
a show mm -hmm. where Dr. I guess I was explaining it. Ah, I was with the Dr. I guess yes. he was here. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> there are also um, um, insemination pro uh, methods or technology that are used when uh, uh, by, by, by vets to, to, what do we call? Inseminate. To inseminate. Yes. Uh, what are the, tell us a little bit about some that are here. Insemination is fairly straightforward. Uh, insemination is fairly straightforward. It's just, you, you've got the insemination gun, you mm -hmm. load it, mm -hmm. the cow has to be in heat, or the heifer has to be in heat okay. to inseminate. There's just one way of doing it. Okay. Um, really, yeah. Um, there was one where they call it uh, embryo transfer. I don't know. Oh, that's Maybe not that insemination. That is embryo transfer. So, um, reproductive technologies, mm -hmm. at, the, uh, at, at the basic level, you're looking at artificial insemination. Yes. Um, artificial insemination, AI, mm -hmm. it's basically placing semen into the reproductive tract. Okay. Then there is embryo transfer, where you, you generate embryos, inside of a, inside of a female cow cow or heifer uh, and then you flush them out and you can put them into other other cattle that have been prepared to be at the same stage to accept them mm -hmm. um, but so that's one level one, one type of uh, embryo transfer the other one would be you flush out eggs and do the fertilization in a petri dish Mm -hmm. outside of the cow. That's called in vitro, in vitro uh, yeah. fertilization. And then the embryo is grown to a point and then put back into, car into cattle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what are, um, in terms of um, the process of arriving at, uh, at an hybrid, which one is faster? Artificial if insemination or the embryo transfer or the in vitro? Uh, you mentioned you grew up on a farm. Yes. And your father was was called the AI guy. That, that's the, the, the quickest, the, okay. the most uncomplicated. You, you've got your local cow, you want to, to upgrade. So say it's a local Zebu, and you want to go the route of the Asha. You get that cow inseminated with Asha semen. Mm -hmm. The offspring, you inseminate again with Asha semen. So you move from 50-50 to 75%. Mm -hmm. If you inseminate again, you get to uh, 80 something percent. As far as we are concerned at the start book, mm -hmm. you are upgrading and there is a system that allows you to go from foundation. A foundation animal would be an animal that has characteristics of say the, jazz, the Asha. Mm -hmm. And then if you keep improving it, you'll get to a point where it's pedigree and it can be considered as um, of that breed. Okay. Yeah. So as a country where when, when it comes to uh, pedigree dairy cows, where do we start as compared to the rest of the world? We have, in Africa, mm -hmm. we have, I think, the second largest population after South Africa. Uh, but a, a quick rider, we are not producing, we're not efficient as a country in producing milk, given the population of the, the cattle we have. Okay. Yeah. When you talk about efficiency, um, what do we need to do then to improve our efficiency? Or what is South Africa doing that we are not doing? There are, I don't have the figures at, the tip, at, the, at my fingertips, yeah. but there are, their production per animal is much higher than ours. Okay. So if the production per animal will go up, then we'll be getting better. Okay. Yeah. That would be one, one, one way to look at it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, another thing that farmers have been uh, grappling with a lot is um, the cost of feeding. Oh. That is the, they, they say it takes close to 70% of their income yes. just to feed the animals. Yes. Why is the cost of feeding this high? And what, what, what do farmers need to do to s somehow reduce that cost of feeding? Uh, to feed an animal, you need basics. You need water, you need minerals, you need what we call dry matter. Mm -hmm. And dry matter is 
split into carbohydrates, proteins, and, uh, and lipids. Okay. You can get all this from grass, but it won't be enough, so you need to add, you need to supplement with concentrates. And that's where our problem, I think, mostly is. Mm -hmm. The quality of grass is not always great. We don't have a good culture of harvesting mm -hmm. grass at the right stage. Okay. That, that's information that needs to get to farmers, and they need to be able to do it. Okay. And then there is the issue of concentrates. As far as concentrates are concerned, we are a net importer of concentrates as a country. Mm -hmm. um, so there, 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 there lies our problem. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, just, it's expensive and the price of milk is not always uh, good enough to allow you to, to feed efficiently. Okay. Mm -hmm. For a farmer who has a dairy cows, um, and maybe I'm new and I'm depending on my milk as an income, uh, does it really work? Does it really make um, uh, uh, financial sense at the end of the season? You've got to, you've got to make, to make it work, mm. you've got to be efficient. One of the ways to be efficient is to have a calf born every year so that you have a calving interval of one year. It's not easy to attain. Most people do 18 months or even more. Mm -hmm. But if, if you're able to bring that down to say 13, 13 months from one calf to the next, it means then you're producing milk. That cow is not wasting time on your farm. Okay. So just, that's, what, that's number one. Number two, mm -hmm. that cow has got to have the potential to give you lots of milk. Okay. Because if she doesn't have the potential to give you lots of milk, then it, it doesn't matter what you feed her. Um, and then you've got to pay attention to, to detail. One thing that I see a lot of times I, I, I visit farms is just the sheer waste of feed, wrong types of um, feed troughs. Uh, just farmers spend a lot of time and money to get the feed into their store. And between the store and milk production, there's lots of waste. Okay. That's just one, one other thing that I've seen over, over the years. Okay. When you also talk about the dairy breeds, how do we, how do farmers now, uh, over time, arrive at their best breeds? So that you don't have 100 cows and half of them are it, not good breeds. You, in, in, in farming talk, it's called culling. Yes. So you just keep selecting. And you cannot select, this is an important one, mm -hmm. you cannot select if you're not keeping records. Okay. So farmers need to keep records. It's not enough to know that my, 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 my cow is called Mrembo, the other one is called Karebi, and you don't know how much they're producing without recording it. Mm -hmm. uh, at KLBA, Kenya Livestock Breeders Association, we provide this service. Uh, I might as well mention that ILRI is currently, we're working with ILRI and currently wanting to roll out a program that allows for the capture of, of, of this information so that it can be processed and sent back to the farmer. So the key thing, if you want to cull, is you must be able to, to, to keep records so that you can say, out of my 10 cows, this one gives me the most milk. This one is a, ha a difficult breeder, so you've got to make a choice. Do you want to keep uh, this one or that one or the other one? So it's, you've got to have records. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and collectively, those records can be used collectively in the, in the country to make decisions for the country. Okay. Yeah. So well, let's, let's stay a little bit with the, with the records. Uh, what else can I use my records for, apart from just deciding and giving me information on my best breeds and those that are not good? What other, what, what, what other need do I need to keep uh, records? Allow me to just come back to KLBA okay. on that question. Mm -hmm. If you keep good records and you send them to us consistently, we will be able to issue you certificates, okay. pedigree certificates that say how good that animal is. And you'd be surprised how effective that is as a selling tool 
to you, the farmer. Okay. So if you are able to say that this cow has this certificate, so the, the, the offspring mm -hmm. has the potential. And so therefore, because of that, instead of asking for 120, I'm asking for 350. People are, people are selling. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Um, let's also go to some of the challenges apart from uh, just uh, the feeding, uh, the high cost of feeding. Yeah. What are the challenges do dairy farmers go through? Disease. Mm -hmm. Disease. I, I'm a vet and I can say this for sure. I think out there, perhaps we don't have enough vets. I was talking to somebody uh, just before I, on my way here and they said, how do I tell the difference between a dactari and a dactari out in the, in the village? Mm -hmm. many, there, are many, there are many quacks out there. So okay. sometimes you get the wrong, the wrong advice. Sometimes you don't have access to the right dactari. Sometimes you have access and, and the, the price of, of that consultation is out of your reach as a, as a dairy farmer. Mm -hmm. Many times that is the case. Um, or it could be just expensive dawa. Okay. Yeah. Also, when it comes to uh, breeding, especially using artificial insemination, uh, there are farmers I've met that complain that uh, I've been trying to breed this cow for some time now, but nothing has happened. After every two weeks, the cow is on heat again. What What could be the problem? Many times, I think, like in like in insurance, you go to a portion blame, and I always like to start with the farmer. Mm -hmm. Is the farmer doing the right things right? Mm -hmm. There's no point of asking me to come to inseminate your animal after the period that is optimal for insemination has passed. It mm -hmm. will be a waste of your time and, and, and my time. So how so, do I know that, that period, this is the period? If, you've got to be a good farmer. Uh, you've got, so it brings us to the issue of extension, issue of knowledge. If, if you've got to have been able to, you've got to be able to tell. So there, there, there are signs that cows show mm. that, they're, that they're in heat. A farmer has, has got to be able to, to say the cow is in heat. If they're not able to say that for certain, mm -hmm. then, then there will be problems. Okay. So that's number one. So that's cow, farmer problem. It could be a cow, it could be a cow that has disease in the, in the uterus, pyometra for instance, or endometritis, is just infection of the uterus. Or it could be a cow that doesn't have the apparatus. You know, some cows are born without, without properly functioning uterine. Okay. Yeah. So, after, so after how long do I now decide uh, I have given up, I have surrendered and I need to call this if cow? It's, if it's a cow that has never given birth, I would say consult your vet. Okay. Really consult your vet before you give up. Uh, you first started by saying you will apportion the blame to the farm yes. at first. Yes. Is there some, uh, some other instances where blame can be apportioned to the vet? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, for instance, if in my tank mm -hmm. I'm the inseminator, if in my tank the tank has run dry, the liquid nitrogen tank has run dry, it means the semen has died. Ah, okay. If the semen has died, I'll be shooting blanks. All right. Uh, thank you, Doc. Uh, You're welcome. Let's take a short commercial break, but we will be back shortly. For a few hours back at home, today we are talking about um, uh, dairy farming. And today we are with uh, Dr. Nelson Ojango, who is a vet by profession and is taking us through all what you need to know uh, as a dairy farmer. We will be back in a few.